Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amy, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about building a personal brand online and how to craft a voice that is distinctly you. Um, so let's get started. Awesome. So hello, how is everyone doing? How is everyone's GopherCon? Can I get a little, all right. Okay, how is everyone's GopherCon? Okay, <laughs> um, let's like get some blood flowing. This is the last talk of the day, and uh, after this we can all, we can all hang out. Um, so my name is Amy, I am a system software engineer at Heptio, and I also happen to run a YouTube channel called Amy Codes. I love all things distributed systems, um, and day to day I work with Kubernetes, Docker, and Go. Therefore, that like, hence why I'm here. Um, and when I have the free time, I like to salsa dance. Please do feel free to take photos um, of my slides because that took a really freaking long time to draw. Um, uh, I am. Uh, this is like my greatest artistic abilities right on this one slide. Uh, awesome. And if you have any questions, definitely feel free to tweet out the hashtag AskAmyCodes and tag me. And I'll definitely look up the hashtag after my talk so I can answer um, some questions on Twitter. Um, don't be weird with your questions because I will publicly shame you. <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead and ask me questions on Twitter. So let's get started and talk about you know, building a personal brand online um, and crafting an online voice. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is tell you about my story and my journey. And we'll start at the very beginning um, of how I got into software engineering, actually. So in college, the, the whole dream was like, oh, I want to be a doctor. And um, so I, I went to college for pre-med. Um, I realized quickly that this was not for me because it involves a lot of rote memorization, which I really sucked at. Um, and this is the part of my story where um, a lot of my life is really serendipitous. So I don't know if you all know the website Omegle, but if you don't, it's this like online anonymous chat roulette where you like chat via text. And so this was sophomore year of college. I was looking for other classes to take. Um, and some random online stranger was like, you should try computer science. And so that also happened to coincide with the time that I was signing up for classes. And therefore, that's why. And so we signed up for computer science, and that's how I got into software engineering. So that's the beginning of my story, which is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, while I was at college, I realized that uh, I went to a lot of things uh, like called hackathons. So basically, a bunch of college students, they just sort of like go to this one event to go hack on code together. Um, and at that point, when I went, I realized there's these events are filled with a lot of dudes, so I wanted to make some friends. So I built, a I think now there's like 12,000 people in the Facebook group, and it's called Ladies from Hackathons. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then the next serendipitous part of my story is that um, is how I got into distributed systems. So uh, during my internships and things like that during college, I focused mainly on backend web development. So this was just focusing on web apps and focusing on one application. Um, but then I was like, oh, like I do, I do know that I enjoy software engineering, um, but I'm not really into web development. What else can I do? And so my friend told me to follow this one person on Twitter, and she was talking about Go, about containers, um, about container orchestration and all that stuff. So then on a whim, once again, I decided to go ahead and try that out. Um, and actually, about three months before I was um, looking for full-time jobs, I started learning Go because I knew that all the distributed system things that I wanted to work on, most of the companies were Go shops. So um, Go is actually the reason I got into distributed systems. And it's a really fast and quick language to learn, as you all know, because you are all here. Um, and that was awesome. So, um, and, now, and now I'm at Heptio. So for you all, um, I would love for you to tweet at me how you came to starting Go, and my Twitter handle is on the top right-hand corner there. Um, and I would love to hear your stories um, on how you got to this wonderful language with like the cutest mascot ever. Um, so before I talk to you about you know, creating an online uh, identity and um, building a personal brand, I guess the first thing I should tell you is why I actually focus on this a lot. So 
I'm the kind of person where I really, really hate needing to prove myself. Um, I don't want to give the gatekeepers of our industry the, the excuse to say no. Um, and so what I do is, is I kind of you know, fast forward a couple steps ahead of time and share as much as possible so that um, figuring out what I know is their responsibility. And therefore, I know that if they're not invested in me as an employee because they didn't look at the plethora of like content that's online that I've created. Um, and so that also helps me filter out for you know, companies that aren't a good fit for me because they didn't take the time to look into what I do know and what I, what I do day to day. Um, and also, it's, it's really great in terms of being given the benefit of the doubt uh, when you want new opportunities because they're like, oh, okay, like, I'm familiar with your content. Um, I'm familiar with everything that you've done, that you've published online. And maybe today was just a bad day where you were just really bad at interviewing because it's really stressful when someone is watching you code or something or like, it, God, if God forbid you have to do like a whiteboard interview, which it sucks. <laughs> um, it's really stressful for you as interviewee, and um, for interviewers, it's like great to be able to have um, some content to be able to work off from. Um, I like being able to be seen as a domain expert. Um, I think it allows me, it gives me the opportunity to sway, influ uh, to sway decisions and um, exert influence over my technical community. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, another thing is that uh, job security is really important to me. Not everything is like rainbows and unicorns all the time. Like you never know what happens. Um, and I don't really want to depend on only the benevolence of my employer f for employment, um, which I do love my employer. I, I'm not like job searching, but you never know what happens, right? Let's say like, you know, the company goes out or something, um, or you have like a terrible coworker that you can't seem to get away from. Um, I've seen from peers in the industry that no matter how great a company is, things can turn really fast, right? Um, and if I want out, I want out immediately. And having a personal brand online really helps with that because I can just tell people I want a job and then they will give me a job. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Um, I enjoy that um, I'm appropriately credited for the things that I do. Um, I've had experiences in the past where I didn't really tell anyone about the things that I was doing and people kept on taking credit for the stuff I did. So then I was like, the obvious solution is just to tell everything about everything that I do. Um, and that was great. Um, and also I get cool opportunities like this. Um, I get to come talk at uh, international conferences. Well, this is international for me because I'm actually based out of Seattle, Washington in the United States. Um, and I also love having entire topics being associated with me and being the point person people can ask uh, resources from. Um, so as I mentioned before, like I'm super into Go, distributed systems, and also Kubernetes. And the main reason why I create a lot of content is because people ask me a lot of questions, I'm a busy person, and this is a very scalable way to share information. Um, awesome. Let's see. Also, you can like, see from the theme of my slides, it's very pink because I'm a millennial, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, it, I like to draw things because it, hopefully it's more approachable. Um, I've come to realize that I am very externally motivated, maybe because, again, I'm a millennial. Um, I love sharing things publicly. I love collaborating with people on the internet. I love making new friends. So I use external mo motivation as a tool for myself to motivate myself. Like I know that this is a motivator, good or bad. I'm going to use that as a tool to help me do things that I already want to do. And I don't, honestly, like, I think if I put it that way, it's, it's not as superficial. So um, that's why I publish a lot of information online. So I think software engineers, they oftentimes just think about, just focus on code, and they don't really think about per building a personal brand or a lot. Um, and it has been super professionally beneficial to me, as you've seen uh, in, in the last section. Um, and so what I'll do now is talk to you about how to break it down and what exactly a personal brand is. Um, the first aspect of a personal brand is identity. And this is answering the question of who are you, right? Um, and a great exercise that I like doing with people when they think about identity is like thinking of some, some adjectives that they would like to describe about themselves. So 
The first section is sort of the aesthetics of what I want my personal brand to be, feminine, modern, and clean, because that's just who I am. And then the second part is the voice that I want people to interpret when they read things that I write. So for me, I want people to associate me with being irreverent, because I'm really snarky, um, and being practical, approachable, and empowering. Um, it's, this was a great exercise I did with um, a designer to um, you know, build a style guide for me for everything that I publish online. And you'll see that in terms of identity, um, it's all centered around myself in the sense of like, I'm not trying to um, pretend to be you know, some character, which like, if you watch other YouTube channels, um, Oftentimes they they like pretend to be a character and that's totally fine too, but they are very clear about what that what that online identity is, right? So every this is the most important thing that I want you all to focus on is just like me understanding what my identity is and really crafting everything around that because without this, your personal brand just means nothing. Um, and in in coming um, and I'll explain that in a second. So what I want to say is that there are plenty of people willing to rally around the brand that you create. Like, honestly, there's so many niches on the internet, right? Like, the, you can watch YouTube videos about, I don't know, like, watchmaking or some, like, or there's, like, even this YouTube channel about, like, I think, like, squishing jelly or something like that, like, squishing this, like, weird Play-Doh stuff. Like, people follow the weirdest shit. So, like, um, like don't worry about, uh, like, trying to pursue a topic that there is a wide audience for because whatever audience like whatever topic you pick I promise you that there will be an audience there meeting you there um, the main thing is you just really really need to understand what your personal identity is right um, and so the main thing I want to talk about is don't go overboard in following trends or for instance you have a YouTube um, channel or if you have a blog like don't try to go play the algorithm um, your target, your, your audience will follow you after you figure out what your identity is. Um, because honestly, the audience that you pick is just people who follow your identity, right? Um, and after you figure out what identity you have, um, then you can figure out what kind of person likes the content that you create. So you can see that everything is formed around yourself. Um, who you are, what you like, and then you'll find the person that also likes that kind of stuff. And um, that will naturally come. And um, in terms of how to build an audience and how to build a personal brand, for me, um, it all surrounds around technical content. So, technical, so content is just a physical representation of your identity, right? So this all goes back to the original thing is identity. And I'm just gonna keep on saying that. You can like, you know, pull out a counter or something for how many times they say identity in this talk because it's gonna be a lot. The different kinds of technical content that you can create are, for instance, tutorials um, at tech conferences when you speak as a conference speaker. Um, or, you know, blog posts, uh, zines. I don't know if you all know, like, Julia, I forget her last name, Evans, thank you. Um, but she has this like amazing sign which it breaks down really complicated technical topics um, and she draws pictures around them and that's like freaking amazing, right? Like I, I really oftentimes like, sometimes I just, in documentation, I just want people to put a freaking picture in there so I can understand better what they're talking about. Um, so the, the kinds of technical content I create are uh, tutorials or oftentimes even non-technical aspects of software engineering. So let me go ahead and see if I can escape from here. Oops. Uh, or maybe go back to play. Uh, that's fine. I was going to show you my YouTube channel and all of the videos. But um, so on my YouTube video, uh, channel, I've like talked about you know, how does SSL work? Or I've also talked about, for instance, um, imposter syndrome and like different topics that are innate in software engineering as, a, as an industry. Um, and it's been really useful for, for other, my, my audience watching these videos to understand what exactly being a software engineer is, is all about. I've also talked about, like, for instance, like, uh, things you should do on your first week at your new job, that sort of stuff. Um, and people really uh, respond to that sort of content. 
I think there's a lot of misconceptions about creating technical content. Um, so one misconception is like, oh, people are like, oh, someone already wrote about this topic, um, so therefore my perspective is, is not useful. Um, first of all, I'm going to tell you that lots of people have written about the same stuff like over and over again, and also people kind of suck at explaining things. <laughs> so probably um, your perspective is really important too because it explains something in a different way, the way that you learned it, um, and, it and it's really important as well and valuable. It's a different pr perspective because people learn differently as well, right? Um, so it's super important. Um, another misconception is like, oh, this problem isn't advanced enough and it's too easy, so people therefore already know how to do this. Um, I remember in college, like, something that was really useful was just how to use rsync and move, like, files from, you know, one location to another. And, like, that was a really popularly viewed um, blog post like during college at the time. So no problem is too easy. If you're having a problem, um, I'm sure other people are having the same problem as well. Um, and also I trust that y'all are very smart. So if you can't figure out, like again, like it's gonna be a problem um, for other people as well. Like maybe the documentation for whatever tool you're using just sucked and uh, there's not enough content around it. Create content, people need it, I promise you. Um, another thing people are afraid about is, oh, I need to be, you know, a domain, I need to be an expert to be able to talk about this topic. That is also not true. Um, I've literally signed up for conference talks uh, with an abstract about a topic that I don't yet know about yet, and um, it was a great forcing function for me to learn about the thing, and the talk ended up great. Um, so, like, you don't need to be an expert to talk about whatever technical con uh, topic that you were thinking about. Um, your perspective is very valuable. So, in terms of technical content, um, here, those are some reasons why, right? Um, but what about ideation? So, in terms of thinking about things to create content around, I keep a notebook next to my desk of all the little problems I have. So during development, it's really great because these, these problems are like super fresh. Um, and like they're fresh in my mind and really frustrating. And so those are great motivators for me to write a blog post, for me to create a video. Um, and uh, that's been super useful. Um, and I already talk, told you about uh, signing up for a conference talk without <laughs> actually knowing the topic yet, but I promise you other conference speakers do that too. They just don't tell you about that. Um, in terms of uh, actually delivering your content, um, it's great that you have the second content, right? You figured out your identity. Um, how do you target the people that you want to actually look at this stuff? So these are pretty generic, like Twitter is great, Facebook groups are great, Slack communities are great. Um, the, the best tool for me in order to get more eyes on the content that I create is collaborating with other um, people within the same niche that also have an audience, and therefore we can kind of like cross-pollinate the two audiences that we have, and that's a really great way to, to build, an, build a larger audience. I think oftentimes people are very like ashamed of self-promotion. They're like, they always, for instance, preface, like I always see tweets like this where like, shameless self-promo, and I don't understand why like, they have to say shameless in front of it. Like, I just view it as I have something to say, I have something interesting to share, and like, you don't need to feel ashamed about that, right? There's a definite difference between sounding promotional, right, versus sharing your excitement. Um, the former, you can definitely tell, like, when they're being unauthentic and like really sales pitchy and like annoying. But if you just phrase it as, I'm really excited about this thing, I think you all should be too, or like, here's a really annoying problem that I've had, and then here's how my solution solves that. Or you don't even have to like talk about your solution, you can just talk about the problem, and then people will naturally want to read the content that you create, right? The most important thing um, after you've figured out your identity, you know how you want to deliver your content and all this stuff, um, the most important thing is building a community around your brand. Again, there's a difference between a community and an audience. A community will advocate for you without being prompted, right? Um, 
And so this is the sort of aspect that really helps you maintain momentum, gain velocity for more people to look at your content. And if your core community is not engaged with your brand, then you need to revisit your identity and slash or the audience you're targeting. Like maybe you have a well-defined identity, but the audience you're targeting isn't right. Um, something really important I learned through that online community tol I, tol I told you about in the beginning is that building a community is just as about, just as about who you exclude as who you include. Um, because one bad actor in your community, if people see that you don't take action against this person, like you know, using the ban hammer li uh, liberally, then they won't trust you as a community organizer, and um, people will have really negative feelings around the community that you've created. So as much as it is about you know, being super nurturing towards new incomers in the community, you also really have to really understand who um, will really turn you, who can turn your community against you really quickly if they say something really you know discouraging um, or like against an underrepresented minority group, um, things like that, you really have to be careful about that um, because one bad actor really can turn your community off to your personal brand. There were several instances um, in that online community where like you know someone said something really terrible, and in past online communities that I've been a part of like it just caused an uproar and people, there were like flocks of people just leaving that community and I saw that and I recognized it was really important for me to be like, in this community, like while everyone's allowed in, certain vo voices are definitely, definitely do matter more than others. Um, not everyone is equated sim uh, equally in this community, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, so if I sort of talked to you about, you know, like why I have a personal brand and like how to do all of this stuff, but like the really important thing for me is that within distributed systems and within um, the, the industry that I work in, it's pretty homogenous in that like there's not people that look similar to me. I'm fairly young and like early in my career and um, like, yeah, like every distributed systems uh, conference that I've gone to, it's like, People later in their careers, usually uh, white and usually male. Um, and so for me, building a personal brand is really important also to give back to the community that I'm a part of and all the resources that I've taken. Um, I think it's important for people to see that um, they look like me and that I can inspire other people to go into Go and Kubernetes and build a more diverse community um, and for, to encourage other people to do something similar that I did. Um, it's also important because I want to be able to bring attention to people don't, that don't have large audiences um, listening to them already um, because it's, it's important to be able to spread out the, the voice of the community, right? Um, and another important thing is I think it's important to humanize the tech industry. Like, oftentimes, it's like the most annoying thing ever. On Twitter, people like follow this really famous person, and then all of a sudden they talk about something personal, and they'll go like, "I didn't follow you because of um, you know some political thing, or this, or they were talking about mental illness and going through a personal hardship." And they'll be like, "Oh, I didn't follow you for that sort of content," and they sort of forget that there is a real human behind this, and they're not just you know robot like turning out technical content for this person. Um, so it's important for me to humanize the tech industry. So on my YouTube channel, for instance, um, I do vlogging and like people follow me along like during a day in my life. Um, and that's important to me because they can see that, uh, like who I am as a person. And let's say like I get bored of distributed systems and I, and I don't wanna do this anymore. Um, then they are invested in who I am and will still follow me through whatever I, I end up doing. Um, the main thing is I think it's a very mutually beneficial relationship where while you are growing a brand, um, you are also sharing knowledge that people are asking for. So um, for me, like learning Go and 
creating a YouTube channel and having blog posts and things like that, um, while I am self-promoting in some way, um, it's also super beneficial to everyone reading the content that I create. You can also help like Evangelize Go, for instance, and that's also beneficial to the community as well. So you're not just taking, you're also offering something back, right? So obviously I talked about a lot of stuff. I'm kind of just like crazy and have gone overboard in terms of everything that I do online. I'm not saying you need to do all these things. You can pick and choose you know, small amounts of things that you want to do to, to grow your personal brand. Um, this is more of an account of how, how and why I built my personal brand, what it has enabled me to do, and how you can also do this as well. So if you've taken a little snippet, um, that's, that's all I wanted for you to take away from this talk. So um, hopefully you can draw from my experiences. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of GopherCon UK. Thank you. <laughs>